this is another physics GCC equation video. So just a few practice questions that you might want to do to run up to your exams. So on this one, the equation that we're going to be using is the work done equation. So work done is equal to force multiplied by distance. And the force and the distance have to be working on the same line of action. So that basically means they've got to be in the same direction. GCC they typically are. Um, so work done is force times distance. So work done is measured in joules. Force is measured in newtons. And distance D is measured in meters. So if you want to get that down. And then you can just do question one and two. The first three questions are quite straightforward. Question four is, is, is really difficult, actually. It's a, you know, but even if you can't do it, and you know, if you can attempt it and then follow the way through solutions, you might learn quite a bit from it. Um, and then question five is also an extension on question four, so that's pretty difficult as well. So let's uh, let's start with this. So if you want to have a go at these questions, and I'm going to take through the solutions right now. So if you haven't done them, pause. Right, so a force of 73.9 newtons is applied to a box, and it causes the box to move 37.3 meters in the same direction as the force. Calculate how much work was done. So really straightforward to start with. So work done is simply force multiplied by distance. The force is 73.9 newtons multiplied by a distance of 37.3 meters. So if you calculate that, you should get 2,756 joules. Right, let's look at number two. Well, if you want to pause, you can try number three, but I'm going to go through number two now. So this time we've got a force of 22.9 newtons is applied to an object and cause it to move in the direction of the force. The force does 815 joules of work. And this time we're going to calculate the distance. So you've got work done equals force times distance. So on this one, we could either put the numbers in a rearrange, or we can simply rearrange. So we want to find distance, so I want to make D the subject to the formula. So what I need to do is to isolate that on its own and get rid of a times F. So obviously to get rid of times F, I do the opposite on the other side, and the opposite of that is dividing by F. So work done divided by force will give you the distance. So the work done is 815 divided by the force applied, 22.9, and that will give you the distance. And the distance is... 35.6 meters. You could write 36 meters, that's fine as well. well. Let's look at number three. So let's look at this one. So a force is applied to an object. It is 3,780 joules of work and it causes the box to move 42.4 meters. Calculate the force. So work done is force times distance. This time we need to get force on its own. So we need to get rid of a times D. So the opposite of timesing by D is Dividing by D, so work done divided by distance will give you the force applied. So the work done is 3,780 divided by the distance, 42.4 meters. 89 newtons for that one. So far, so good. Now, if you, if you can't do the next two, don't worry about it. They are very difficult, but let's have a look anyway. And if you're a genius, never mind your GCSE exams, this will tell you. So if you want to pause it and have a go, so you should be able to see. Let me just zoom that out a little bit so you can see both of them together. If you want to have a go at these, if you get these right, it's very impressive. If not, well, I'm going to go through the answer now. If at any point as I'm going through the answer you think, ah, yeah, I get that now, feel free to pause the video and then and then take it from there. So this is a, a tricky problem. So we've got to think in terms of what's actually happening in terms of energy before we do any calculations. So we've got a child, uh, you know, we've got the mass and they're climbing uh, a slide and we've got the vertical height. So that's obvious. as soon as you see something like that, you should be thinking, right, so there's a gain in gravitational potential energy. So the child uh, has a speed of two meters per second when they reach the bottom. So now we've got mass and speed. So, you know, kinetic energy should be ringing a bell there. Um, and the slide has a length of 5 metres, calculate the mean frictional force. So we'll, we'll come on to what that means in a moment. So let's calculate the, well, let's think what's happening. So the child's going to gain gravitational potential energy. And then as they come down the slide, the gravitational potential energy store is going to convert into one of two things. Number one, it's going to convert into some kinetic energy, which we can calculate. Plus, there's also some work done 
by the friction on the slide. So there's, there's also work done by the slide. So we can calculate GPE, we can calculate kinetic energy, then we need to calculate the work done. So let's do GPE first. So the gravitational potential energy is MGH. If you can't remember that, um, it's, you know, either use your book or, you know, I've got a lesson on gravitational potential energy that you can go and watch. So mass is 25 times gravitational field strength, which on Earth is 9.8 times the vertical height of 3 metres. So the total gravitational energy is... 735 joules. And even if you got that bit, you know, that, that's really good. So let's calculate the kinetic energy. So kinetic energy, if you can't remember that, I've got a video on this, I've got two videos. Kinetic energy is a half mv squared. So that would be 0 0.5 times the mass, 25 kilograms, times two squared, and two squared is four. So four times a half is two. Two times 25 is 50 joules. So we've got GPA. And we've got the kinetic energy and we need the work done. So the work done will be the difference between the gravitational potential energy and the kinetic energy. So if we do uh, 735 joules, subtract the 50 joules, that tells us how much work was done by the frictional force on the slide. So 735 and subtract 50. So that gives you 685 joules. 685 joules of work done against the slide. So now to get the force, we've got work done. This is the equation that we've been using is force times distance. So we need to get the force. So it's work done divided by distance. The work done we've just got is 685 divided by the distance down the slide. And the length of the slide is five meters. So if you do 685 divided by five, that will give you a grand total for the force of 137 newtons. And if you got that, that is exceptional. So well done. If not, but you followed it, that's great. And if you, you know, if you're halfway there, that's also brilliant. Well, let's look at number five then. So on this one, the child, as they do, puts washing up liquid on the slide and reduces the frictional force by a factor of 2.5. Now we're going to calculate the final speed of the child. Okay. So the, the force is 137. So if we go with 137, and now it's two and a half times less because it's been reduced, we need to divide that by 2.5, and that will give us a, a new force. So 137 divided by two and a half. So the new force is 54.8 newtons. The distance of the slide is still the same. It's still the five meters. So what we can do, because what we can do now is calculate the work done by the frictional force uh, as you move down the slide. So the work done is the new force is 54.8. Work by distance of five meters because that's how long the slide is. So now the slide only does 274 joules of, uh, of work. So now an interesting one, if you figure this out, is the original gravitational potential energy obviously will convert into one or two things. It'll convert into kinetic energy plus the work done. We now know the new work done. The new work done is 274 joules. And the GPE we already knew earlier as 735 joules. So now we've got 735 joules of, of gravitational energy turning into, we've got 274 joules of uh, work done against the frictional force on the slide. And now the kinetic energy is obviously the difference between them. So we need to do 735 minus 274. So that gives us a kinetic energy of 461 joules of energy. Now, if you got that far, that's fantastic. Now, we know the mass of the child is 25 kilograms from earlier, and we know that the kinetic energy is 461 joules. So now, I'm going to have to make some room. We can calculate the speed, the new speed. So the equation, kinetic energy, if you can't remember this one, I've got two videos on this one as well. An equation practice and a full lesson on kinetic energy. So now kinetic energy is force, so we need to rearrange this as well. And I've got two videos on kinetic energy practice where I do the rearranging, which you can check out if need be. So we need to get V on its own. So we need to get rid of a half. So the opposite of halving is doubling. So it's two times the kinetic energy equals M times speed squared. And then we need to get rid of the times mass. So the opposite times divided by mass is divided by mass. So two times the kinetic energy 
divided by the mass or equals speed squared. Once you've got that, you just need to square root the answer. So two times the kinetic energy, so it'd be two times 461 divided by the mass of the child, which is 25 kilograms, and that will be V squared. So times by two, 461 times by two is 922 divided by 25 is 36.88 for V squared, 36.88 joules. And then the square root of that to give V is 6.1 meters per second. Now, if you get something as hard as that on your exam, then the exam boards have officially lost the plot. That's slightly above the GCSE. You know, and you'd expect a, a, an half decent AS student to be able to do that. So if you if you know if you got the last one, then that's that's mega impressive, and you should probably consider doing A level physics. Um, and even if you didn't get it, you know, you should probably consider doing A level physics. Anyway, hopefully that's helped, and you've got a you know you've learned something. But thanks for watching, and I'll speak to you soon.